Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tatum Tamia. Make sure that you subscribe and you also hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the awesome content that we put out. On today's video, I'm going to be answering some questions from my Instagram. So make sure you're following me on the gram at Tatum Tamia, T-A-T-U-M-T-E-M-I-A. Let's answer the questions. So the first question says, how do you get past the fear of marketing yourself and getting no responses? I love this question because marketing, if you guys don't know, is my area of expertise. I believe that that skill is the secret sauce to a lot of the success that I've been able to achieve in business and, and not only just my business, but the people that I work with businesses as well. So first of all, as the business owner, you have to understand where your limitations are. So the fact that you asked this question is telling me that you are getting frustrated because your marketing efforts aren't receiving any response. So the first thing that I would do is first ask, your, ask myself or for you, ask yourself the question of, is marketing my area of expertise? If it isn't, then it's time to find somebody who that is their area of expertise. Now understand in the beginning, cost and budget is a big thing for a lot of entrepreneurs. So this investment can be more so of maybe like instead of hiring somebody to be on your team or hiring somebody on a month to month retainer basis, you can do a one time strategy session with somebody. And that way they can outline what your marketing should look like for your business. They can show you what you need to be doing, uh, what channels you need to be on, what type of content you need to be putting out but I would really just take do take a little moment to do like some self-evaluation for a second and see if this is something that needs to be hired out in some type of capacity your budget will determine how but definitely figure out if that's something that needs to happen also understand that marketing is all about testing that's it it's about testing things and finding more of what works and finding out what doesn't work so that you can do more of what works and less of what doesn't so it's all about data. So if you're putting out content, I want to want you to get a sort of a mindset shift here. If you're putting out content or you're doing any type of marketing efforts and you're not getting a response, you're not getting a response is not a bad thing because that's data. Now you know, okay, when I post on these days or when I post this type of stuff or only posting on social media or whatever isn't working. So now you can take that and say, okay, let me put that in the bucket of what's not working. And a lot of times it may not be you need to throw it all away. It may be maybe you're not posting at the right times. It may be you're focusing more on Instagram where your audience is on TikTok or whatever. It could be something very very nuanced and small that needs to be fixed but that's why I say it's important to incorporate or hire some type of expert that could be able to then break that down for you so get past the fear of marketing but hire somebody that knows what they're doing and also understanding that all data is good and just because you're not converting doesn't mean that oh I'm so terrible and my business is horrible it just means that I need to solve this problem and that's with anything in your business. Once you become an entrepreneur, you're a problem solver. So how you feel about the problems doesn't really matter. It's time to solve those problems. And the more you focus on how you feel about it, that's taken away from the time that you could be spending on solving that problem. So one thing that I suggest that you and anybody else practice in business is detaching yourself from your feelings in a sense where how you feel shouldn't dictate what you do. How you feel shouldn't dictate if you show up for your business that day, if you continue with marketing efforts. It's, you simply have to focus on whatever problem is available and how you're going to solve it. How you feel about it, again, does not matter. So I hope that helps. If not, leave me a comment in the um, comment section and I can elaborate maybe in another video. Okay, next question. This one says, what has been the biggest changes you've made to accommodate being a mother in addition to a wife and an entrepreneur? This is probably like the question that I get asked the most now that I've had a baby. Everybody wants to know how I've been able to balance things. Honestly, to be real, I'm still figuring it out. Like while I'm recording this, my son is three months old. I'm still figuring it out. I've only been back working in my business full time for a couple of weeks. So Honestly, it's something I'm still figuring out, but some things that I can pull out though is that hiring and delegating is huge. And this was big on my mind even while I was pregnant was because I already knew that 
one, I wanted to be a present mom. I wanted to see when my son laughed for the first time. I wanted to see the changes in his appearance. I want to see how he responds to certain things. Like I wanted to be very present a very very present parent and I knew that being a present parent was going to take away from my business so then going back into problem solving mode how can I make sure that my business is still growing that is maintaining and I'm still reaching uh, my goals and I'm still accomplishing the things that God has me doing while not neglecting my family because all of these things are blessings right the business is a blessing the family is a blessing whatever title you hold is a blessing and so uh, I think a lot of times we listen out everything that we have going on and use it as an excuse as to why we can't do one right so we may say that our kids are our motivation but then they become our excuse as to why we aren't able to accomplish something so for me I, that was a huge prayer point when I was pregnant with God how am I going to make sure that I'm showing up to everything that you've blessed me with in excellence and so one of the things that that I've been able to do that's work is hiring and delegating so looking at all of the things that go into all of these roles and figuring out what can I delegate. So in business, one of the things that took up a lot of time in business was administrative tasks. So I hired an assistant. So all administrative tasks, the checking of the emails and all of that, responding to people and having those conversations, those are not done by me anymore. Also, marketing was a huge, huge thing in business. And having multiple brands, it just becomes that much more work. And so I knew marketing was another area that I had to delegate. Even though that's an area of expertise for me, I couldn't be the one that's doing all the work. So, And marketing also is the vehicle that drives sales. So marketing is a very important part of my business because it directly impacts the income. And so I hired out as far as my marketing goes. And um, so now I'm looking, even looking deeper into my business, what am I still showing up for? And so I'm looking at my revenue streams, like, okay, 60% of my revenue is active and 40% of my revenue is passive. So that needs to change in order for me to do everything that I have to do. So I started coming up with new ways for, or new revenue streams that were completely passive so that I'm still making money, I'm still reaching my goals, but I don't have to show up for it. And I'm making sure that I'm cutting back on the active revenue stream. So these are just some of the adjustments that I've made and delegating as much as possible. I'm only going to do the things that only I can do and the things that somebody else could do. I'm going to delegate those things out so that I can make sure that I'm still spending time with my family and that my business is still serving our audiences the way that we should. Another thing that I do is self check-ins and evaluations. And I do this every single week. I sit down with myself and uh, sometimes I have a notebook, sometimes I have a, a whiteboard and I just reflect on the week. What went well? What didn't go well? And what can I do and implement that makes next week better? So the first week that I came back into um, business, I grocery shopped over the weekend. Um, I cooked like maybe once or like one or two meals that weekend. And so what I realized was halfway through the week, I had to cook again. So I had to leave my office, come back home, cook for my family. Oh, like, I was exhausted. And so I decided, okay, now I need to meal prep all of our meals on Sundays. And so that's what I do now. Sundays are 100% dedicated to preparing for the week. Also, I have health and fitness goals. And so if I ain't cooking, that means I'm going to be eating out. And if I'm eating out, I'm more likely to eat some garbage. And so me cooking also helps me stay on point with the goals that I have. And um, so that was a big thing for me, making sure that I was really cooking enough meals to last us um, through the week. Also, did I take time for myself? So one thing that I realized was my schedule is I wake up at six. My husband is on a night shift with the baby. I wake up at six. First thing I do is I go grab the baby from my husband. He can sleep for a couple hours before he logs in for work. Um, and then after that, around like eight o'clock, I have a workout three times a week. And then after that, I get the baby, I get the baby ready before my workout. And then after my workout, I take a shower, I make a quick smoothie for myself. I drop the baby off at daycare, which is my mom's house. I drop the baby off at my mom's house and then I head straight to my office. Now, after I leave my office, I go straight. My husband picks the baby up so I don't have to pick him up, but I go straight home. And then it's family time again because the baby's home, husband's off work, so now it's family time. I haven't had any Tatum time. 
So I go from one responsibility to the next and I haven't even had enough time to kind of check in with myself. And so something that I implemented was I stopped working at maybe four or five and I give myself an hour or so before I go home. And that's just my time to do whatever I want. If I want to go get my feet done, if I want to go just take a walk real quick and gather my thoughts, if I want to read a book, if I want to take a nap, whatever that is to, to check in with me, then that's now allocated into my day. And also the great thing about hiring and delegating in business is if I need to take a day off, I'm going to take the day off because I need to maybe check in with me. I don't know, whatever I need to do, I'm going to do that. And then the last thing that I do is just prepare, prepare as much as possible. When um, usually towards the end of the week, I'll plan out everything that needs to happen. So I know what's going on in my business until 2021. And I know every task that goes into all that we have going on. And so every week I pull, I have a master list of those tasks. I delegate whatever needs to be delegated. And then I know what I'm doing every single day of the week before that day comes. So I'm not wasting any time figuring out, oh, what am I doing today? Or what do I have to do? I just go into the system that I use and it's listed out for me what I have to do that day and I just get right to it. And that helps me save time because now I'm not wasting time trying to figure anything out. I'm just doing the plan that I already mapped out. The other part of that question, um, she asked, what worked before being a mother that is no longer feasible for you? Girl everything (laughs) no but seriously I used to wake up and just open my laptop I worked 24 7 all day every day and so waking up and getting straight to my business just doesn't work anymore because like I said I want to be there for my family so when I go get my son at 6 a.m. I might be, he might be asleep, he might be up, but that's our time. Like that's our cuddle time and I'm sitting there cooling with him and I'm putting his little hands together and showing him how to pray. Like that's our time where it's just me and him. If he's asleep, then we gonna just lay there together and I'm just looking at him and touching his hair and praying over him and just being so excited that this little cute thing is mine. Um, Or if he's up, then we're playing together, but I can't just wake up and get into business mode. Like business has a place and it's still important, but it's not more important than my family. And it's not more important than God. So I have a very clear hierarchy that I have to commit to of God, family, business. And so I also have to make sure that I'm carving out time to where I'm still in prayer. Uh, One way that I do that is I incorporate fasting a lot. I I have a fasting and praying type of life forever on some type of fast because that's how I make sure that I'm not moving out of alignment with God. So now being on the go and grinding, I had to divorce myself from that grind mentality because that's not sustainable. Um, And it's really popular right now as an entrepreneur to kind of talk about how bossed up you are in comparison to how much you have to do or how much you can grind. And to me, the fruit of my success is not how much I can do, but how happy I am, how happy my family is. The fact that my husband's happy, my son is happy. I'm, I'm, I'm making an impact in the lives of the people that God has called me to. Like, it's not all about me. You know, and, and for a while in business, it was for me, it was all about me and being successful. And that's just not going to work. That that wasn't going to work for me doing things God's way. But it for sure isn't going to work now that I'm a mom. I have to make sure that I am showing up for the things that I pray for in a way that honors God. Can't pray about the blessing and then complain about it. Like you have to tend to it and, and act like it was worth all them tears you cried for. Because for me, that was a huge prayer point for me. I really wanted a, a family, you know, a child and, and a husband. And I wanted to be, I wanted all of these things and I'm not going to mess it up because God gave it to me. I'm going to figure out how to make sure, like I said earlier, I'm showing up to all of these things and I'm doing them in excellence. I'm working as if God was sitting right next to me, judging what it is that I'm doing. Okay. So next question. This one says, what's the best way to run a business on low funds? Okay, before I answer, we got to do a little mindset check here. Stop saying that you have low funds. I remember, I think we did a video for the Anchor Media page and someone said they had a small podcast. Like we have to stop using our, like the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So watch what it is that you say. You don't have low funds. 
okay i don't care what the bank account says so don't say that out your mouth that i have low funds so we're gonna reword this question what's the best way to run a business let's say on a budget because everybody i got everybody has a budget no matter how much money is in that budget there is a budget present okay um so yeah don't be talking about you have low funds because you're going to always be there if that's the case and even if you get money you're going to go right back to it because you have this mindset of having low funds so let's switch that up first um but to answer your question figure out how many how much funds does your business actually need you know i think a lot of times we go into just buying stuff for our business and putting coming up with these prices or whatever but we're not doing the proper foundational work which is coming up with how much what's my operating cost have very clear operating costs in your business have a clear budget as to how much your business needs to run have a clear goal as to how much you want to make in your business um how much does your product cost versus how much you're selling it for what's that profit margin like these are like the, the, the questions that the foundational questions that need to be asked and then once you know what your operating costs are then you know how much it takes to run your business and then you can find the funds for it what's crazy to me i think that money should never be a reason why somebody can't do something because there's so many ways to get money i remember when um i first hired my business coach maybe like in 2016 because I wanted to be a full-time entrepreneur and she specialized in people going from employees to full-time entrepreneurs. I didn't have in my budget the money to be able to pay for her. So I picked up a part-time job where I was able to make more money to be able to afford her. And then I looked at my, my budget as far as like my household expenses and living expenses and I cut back. I was eating PB and J spaghetti. I cut that thing back cereal i was cutting that joint back as much as possible so that i can get every little cent possible to pay for her i sold everything in my apartment i put candle holders on ebay clothes stuff in the decor like my apartment looked crazy i still kept the bed and stuff because i don't think i was gonna go as far as sleeping on the air mattress (laughs) but but uh i sold a lot of things because i needed money to be able to invest and so that was way before like uber and instacart if that was out back then i don't i well uber was out i didn't want to do uber because i had to think about strangers in my car but i would have done something like an instacart and go and grocery shop for some people for some money like there's so many ways to make money to where money shouldn't be an excuse but you need to know how much money you actually need so do a budget you it's as simple as an excel spreadsheet it's as simple as that. Like it doesn't cost a lot to be organized. Just get you an Excel spreadsheet. You could use softwares like QuickBooks or uh, FreshBooks or any other type of uh, business expense software. But Google Excel spreadsheets are always free. So that's something that you could use to clearly define your operating budget so that you know how much you need and then go out and find the money. Um, oh, the last question asked me, why did I choose to go into marketing? So for those of you guys who don't know, my undergrad degree is in public relations. And then after I graduated, um, all of my jobs was in marketing and marketing is just, I've loved it ever since then. The reason why I went into marketing is because when I got into my public relations coursework, I really wasn't feeling it. Um, PR is all about managing perception and perception being reality. So the truth doesn't really matter. It's all about what we can orchestrate like how we can get somebody to think or the message that we can portray and how we can use like the media and things like that in order to do it and it was this case study that we looked at i'm trying to remember this is a while ago but it was something to where uh, a tobacco company this was like way back in the day when marketing i mean pr first was a thing where this tobacco company wanted to get more women to buy tobacco. And at that time, the feminism movement was really picking up. And so what they did was they did this campaign with, they showed a lot of women smoking. And so they, they did it, they presented it in a way to where basically smoking made you equal to men. That was the message that was given and the perception that they had around cigarettes. Nobody cared that, that cigarettes was killing people. Nobody cared that now you're just 
giving more people something to harm their bodies. It was all about perception and creating a perception that had the goals, that had the business goals met. And to me, there was like an ethical thing that I just didn't really like there. Like it was, it was hit that my morality in a sense where I just didn't like that. And um, I could have still gone into PR and did maybe like some type of cause PR, maybe crisis management. There's so many avenues that I could have went into, but I really liked marketing because PR manages the perception and PR is about building those relationships with the media and things like that. And marketing is about making sure that those efforts convert into dollars. And so I wanted to do marketing because it was more focused on actually converting and data and stuff like that. And that makes me excited. I like to see data i like to see things convert i like to create systems and things that convert well like that stuff makes me excited all of the glitz and glam and all of the fluffy things that go into pr just wasn't attractive to me so that's why i, I went into it so that's it for this video you guys this is the last question we're going to wrap it up here and then we're going to do a part two in the next video don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell and follow me on instagram as well at tatum tamia if you have any more questions leave them in the comments below i'll see you guys in the next video